Hey, welcome to iFlip for Math MathCast lesson 14-1, Customary Units of Capacity. I'm Mrs. Gooding and our quote tonight is by General Omar Bradley who said, bravery is the capacity to perform properly even when scared half to death. Can you guess why I chose this quote? Right, number one, because the word capacity is in it and we're using it a little bit differently tonight since we're talking about liquid volume and capacity is the same thing as how much um, liquid volume there is in something, the capacity to hold a certain amount of liquid. Um, but also because some of us do get kind of freaked out when we're working on math problems or taking a test, and although it's probably not exactly to the level that General Omar Bradley was talking about, we want to continue to perform and think things through instead of letting our emotions get the best of us. Our learning goal tonight is to use the G chart to convert customary units of liquid volume or capacity as some people call it. Here are our individual lesson learning goals. Number one, you will need to be able to memorize and create a G chart without having to look at your notes. So that's your job tonight is to practice memorizing that G chart. Um, when you come to class tomorrow, one of the first things you're gonna be asked to do on your mastery check is to create the G chart because if you have that stored in your brain, you won't ever need a reference page again. We're gonna use that G chart to convert units of liquid volume or capacity. And I want you to memorize big to little multiply small to large divide, just like when we were doing length, same with capacity. Big to little multiply small to large divide. These are the units of capacity that we're going to be using that are listed on the G chart. So there are some fabulous pictures of General Bradley and um, one when he was young, I like that coat he's wearing. We're gonna talk about gallons, quarts, pints, cups, and ounces, and I actually wrote those in order from great, greatest to least. So gallons are the greatest, and then we're gonna to go to the least. And now we're gonna go actually do an example problem. Okay, so I started drawing a G chart out for you, but if you want to just print one out, you can go to www.iflipformath.org and just print one out. Um, you can also just draw this on your paper. You'll have a bigger paper than I'll have to draw it on because my paper is horizontal and yours is vertical. So I draw a big G and this stands for my gallons because I have one gallon and one gallon is equal to four quarts. So I actually have four Q's inside my gallon, four quarts in a gallon. Inside each quart or equivalent to each quart are two pints. See, there are two P's for two pints. And then inside each pint, and you kind of have to make the loop on your P kind of big, you're going to put two C's. There are two cups in every pint. Now, I didn't go ahead and draw this because it's hard to see the C's, but inside every cup there are eight fluid ounces. So you draw an eight with an O for ounces around it. It looks like an eight ball kind of. Eight in every single one of these. So if I asked you how many ounces are in a cup, you could go to one of those C's and see the eight and say there are eight fluid ounces in a cup. Now these are different ounces than ounces in a pound. Those are weight and this is liquid. So if I asked you how many cups are in a pint, you could look at one pint right there and say there are two cups in one pint. If I asked you how many pints are in a quart, you could look at this quart here and say there are two pints because there are two peas in one quart. Now here's where it gets kind of cool if you have your G chart. If I ask you how many pints are in a gallon, here's your gallon, you count the peas in the gallon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight pints in a gallon. If I asked you how many cups are in a quart, you would count all of the C's that are in one Q. One, two, three, four. If I asked you how many cups were in two quarts, you could count all of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If I asked you how many cups were in three quarts, you could count how many C's there are in the three Q's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So this is a really easy way of converting capacity units or liquid volume. And actually a lot of my teacher friends, including myself, have this hanging in our cupboard at home so that when we have to convert to make recipes, we've got it right there ready for us. 
let's go ahead and work a problem. Let's say that if we had five pints, and P stands for pints, we want to know, actually it should be PT, I'm so sorry, five pints equals how many cups? So just like we were doing before, we use our big to little, small to large um, chant. So we're gonna bring our five down like this into our workspace, and we're gonna look at our units of measurement. I can look right at my G chart and I can see that a pint is bigger than a cup because there are two cups in every pint and the cup is inside the pint. So if a pint is bigger and a cup is smaller, then I'm going from big to little. So remember the saying, big to little multiply, small to large divide. Big to little multiply, there's my multiply symbol, small to large divide. And in this case, I'm going from big to little so I'm going to multiply. So I put my multiplication symbol right next to my five. And then I just have to figure out how many of the smaller units are in the larger units. So how many cups are in a pint? And in one pint, there are two cups. So five times two is 10. Five pints equals 10 cups. Now we're ready to do some practice problems. There's our Missouri president. Well, I mean, he's president of the United States, but he's from Missouri, Harry Truman. So I thought that was kind of a cool picture of him putting a star on General Bradley. Number one, 36 pints equals how many quarts? Pause it and push play when you're ready. Use your G chart. Did you write 18 quarts? Let's see how we did that. Can you tell that I learn in color? I like my G chart to be all different colors. You may prefer a G chart that's all different colors too. Let's start out with what we know. We have the number 36. So we'll bring it down to our workspace. Then we're starting with pints and going to quarts. So we come look at our chart and a pint is smaller than a quart. So we're going from small to large, so we're going to divide. And we just have to know how many pints are in a quart. There are two, so we're going to divide by two. And 36 divided by two is 18. So 36 pints equals 18 quarts. Let's try another one. Number two, seven cups equals how many ounces? Remember these are fluid ounces. Use your G chart to figure it out and your big to little multiply small to large divide. Pause it and push play when you're ready. Did you write 56 ounces? Let's see how we did that. So we know that we have seven cups and we wanna figure out how many fluid ounces are in that. So we bring our seven straight down and then we're going from cups to ounces and cups are bigger than ounces because we have eight ounces in a cup. So we're going from big to little, so we multiply. Big to little multiply. And then we have to know how many ounces are in one cup and we know that because it's eight. Seven times eight is 56. So seven cups equals 56 ounces, which is abbreviated OZ. Number three, six quarts equals how many gallons? Pause it and push play when you're ready. Did you write one and a half gallons? Let's see how we figured that out. So we have six quarts equals how many gallons? And we're gonna bring our six straight down and then we're going from quarts to gallons, and I know that there are four quarts in a gallon, so we're going from small to large, so we're going to divide. And then there are four quarts in a gallon, so what I have is six divided by four. Four goes into six one time with two remaining. Now, because I have one, two, three, four quarts equals one gallon, and two gallons, excuse me, two quarts remaining, these two quarts are half of four. I'm actually, I could write one and two fourths if I wrote my remainder in fraction style. And we know that one and two fourths can be simplified to one and one half. So we're bringing in a little bit of our fraction work with our customary measurement work. So here's our practice word problem. General Bradley is purchasing punch for his men. 
he purchases six quarts of punch. If each man will get one cup of punch, to how many men will he be able to serve punch? So we're really trying to find out what. That, that's right. Go ahead and use that information to see if you can finish figuring this out. Pause it and push play when you're ready. Did you write General Bradley will have enough punch for 24 men? I used my G chart and let's see, six quarts equals how many cups? I know there are four cups in a quart. So I can multiply six times four and I get 24. It's time to challenge yourself. If General Bradley knows that each man will drink one cup of punch, how many gallons of punch will he need to buy to serve 367 men? Show your work in your flip journal and come back tomorrow ready to check your answer. Finishing up, go ahead and look back over some of those questions. Make sure you understand every step. If you don't, write that down or draw, draw an arrow pointing to the step that you don't understand. Also write down if you're at a level one, two, or three in your learning. Great G charts, you've completed lesson 14-1, customary units of capacity. Get ready for that G chart quiz tomorrow. I'll see you then.